Not hot. It's not hot, Tim. You mean to make it like? Is it? No. How hot is it? I don't like doing hot things. It's not. It's not too bad. It's okay. It's hot. If, it, if it's hot, she's gonna hit me. I'm gonna hit you. No, no. I I didn't say it wasn't hot. Okay. Just, no hitting. She hits hard. She's got muscle. I don't want to be hit. Okay, that's. All. <laughs> Wait, wait. <laughs> That's no joke. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> she can't hit me. <laughs> oh my word. That's tight back to Victoria. That's uh did I do Oh oh no mention, no mention, no mention. <laughs> Don't put that in my face. <laughs> that that's gonna burn. No. <laughs> Don't that die. And, I and listen, I, I went out to dinner the other night with some people, and oh, these are you from eat these? Brazil. Yeah, she put them on the plate. I went to a Brazilian restaurant, and the girl put them on the plate. She said, Here, this is what you bought. Try this. And so I just stuck the whole thing in my mouth, oh, and I was like, I thought I was going to have to drink the cream. They're, they're hot. They are. They're hot. They're very hot. All right. You guys asked and we delivered. So here we are at Great Gables tonight and we are celebrating my mom's 86th birthday and we're gonna be cooking. I'm here with my sisters and my daughter and mom is gonna introduce us. Well, I wanna welcome you to Great Gables and be part of my 86th birthday celebration. It's always special to me to have all my family together. And on my left is my firstborn, Taryn. <laughs> You did it again, Mom. <laughs> it's okay. Don't edit it out. Usually, Don't edit it it's out. It's usually because I'm the most mature. But this is what happens this, when you turn 86. I usually look older. Than All right. This older. is what happens when you turn 86. <laughs> this is my last born, Taryn. And um, she's wearing a, a Las Vegas uh, apron because we just came back from Las Vegas to attend the shower of my grandson, her son, and his wife expecting their first baby. And we had a really great time. <clears throat> she started all of these names by signing her card a few years ago, Mom's Favorite Child. Now, this is Teresa, my firstborn, and rather than being called my oldest, she refers to be called, she prefers to be called my most mature. <clears throat> And she's wearing an apron. The girls honored me by taking, accompanying me to a trip to Victoria, British Columbia last year. It was on my long, 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 long bucket list. So I started collecting aprons. These are two aprons that I've collected. This is Tiffany. Tiffany didn't have a name, but I heard her tell a guest, I'm mom's best child. So she is my best child. I, that's the first time I've ever, ever heard, heard that, that story. <laughs> this is what happens when you turn 86. <laughs> and she doesn't have it on because I wasn't collecting um, aprons at that time, but she and Teresa and Kelly and Teresa's two daughters, my granddaughters Nicole and Brittany, went to Costa Rica. And then this is Kelly. You all know Kelly, those of you that have watched the films. Kelly's uh, class uh, went to Paris, and <laughs> Tiffany and I accompanied her, accompanied her to Paris. So she's symbolically wearing an apron from Paris. So I'm glad that you're here tonight. These girls, I'm not doing any cooking. I'm just observing, being a little sous chef, gathering up food. I'd let them tell you about it, enjoy it, and thank you for being with me. And we know you're always welcome at Grey Gables. Okay, right. so go ahead, Taryn. Why don't you start off? What's your cooking? So I'm going to be cooking the hamburger meat, and this is a special blend that was made by Teresa. And uh, you want to tell them what's in it? Um, there's chili powder, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, red cayenne pepper, oregano, cumin. I think that's about it. It smells delicious. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to start browning this up and getting this all together. And I am going to be doing steak fajitas, and this is marinated in olive oil and red wine vinegar and some of that fajita mix. And it's just different kinds of steaks, ribeye, fillets, and then red pepper, bell pepper, and onions. So I'll saute that. And we also have chicken quesadillas which we made shredded chicken and then the Mexican Trinity 
which is onions, cilantro, and jalapeno, and mixed it in there with some cheese and some green onions, I mean green chilies. All right. I'm going to put this on. So this is my my fish and we put some Old Bay seasoning on it and when it gets kind of firm we're going to put some butter on it. Usually we use some garlic butter but tonight we're going to use a little bit of margin so we're going to put this um, in the oven and what temperature? Uh, not sure what temperature, but we're going to do this <laughs> little, like this, 425, 425, 425. and we're going to see if it's done. I already d give that disclosure. I don't time things, and I don't use, I just... I know, but Doug said, <laughs> Doug said 425. So we're going to put it in here. Did he say a time? No. Okay. So this is a Mexican salad that my friend uh, Liliana has taught me to make. She makes great fish tacos and a chicken enchilada type thing that I, or chicken fajita that I love. And so it has a uh, fresh cilantro cut up and then of course cabbage. So I'm going to go ahead and add this because it normally you'd like for it to sit overnight. And then we've got um, tomatoes and we're going to do this. And then we're going to just add some onion in it. And then we're going to squeeze lemon in it. And Teresa, will you hand me the salt? So we're going to squeeze all this lemon. And then it's right there, sis. Right here. And then I think you just add the salt to seasoning or to taste. And then we're just going to mix it like this. And then we're going to put this in the fridge and let it kind of saute while the rest of the food's getting done. And then everybody will be able to sprinkle this over their tacos. Okay, I have got a um, queso dip made, a crock pot queso. I've already got it all mixed up. And it is a block of cream cheese, half a cup of sour cream, um, and then two or a pound of pepper jack cheese, a can of green chilies, and a can of Rotel. And I'm going to add some milk just to... Um, thin it out a little bit and we're going to have that with some chips. It's going to be delicious. Well, you could. So I am browning the meat and as soon as it gets all brown, I am going to add the seasoning. So we're just waiting for it to get to get brown and that's about it. Just stirring it up, making sure it gets done. Now I'm going to do this part and then I'm going to let you do all the cheese. So I'm going to dump this in. All right, we're going to do cream cheese. I don't want to move my face. Softened. Okay, and then we're going to do a pound of pepper jack cheese. Clayton, you want to put that in there? Yeah. These? Yeah. We got it already cut up. Just drop them in there. Good job. Okay, and then we're going to do half a cup of sour cream, full fat. And then we're gonna do a can of green can chilies. Okay, go ahead, you do that one. Good job. Mama, can I get to this one? Yeah, we're gonna do that one too. That's easy. Okay. And it's super simple, so I've never done it, but we'll see how it turns out. I'm gonna add a little bit of cumin in there because it's good. Oh, well right now I'm making some enchilada sauce. Enchilada sauce? Yes. Homemade enchilada sauce. Yes. I thought you just bought that all ready to go. You can, but I like homemade better. Oh, that's always better, right? Yes. So what do you have in here? I have one tablespoon of olive oil, two cloves of garlic minced, one tea, uh, teaspoon of minced onion, which I'm doing right now. Half a yeah, teaspoon okay. of oregano. And then two and a half teaspoons of chili powder. One half teaspoon of dried basil. Half teaspoon of ground black pepper, which I haven't added yet. Half a teaspoon of cumin. Two teaspoons of parsley. Six ounces of tomato sauce. And then I'll put one water and then you heat it up over the stove. Till I get ready to do the enchiladas. And this is just regular tomato? Yeah. Sauce? And I usually use no salt, but I'm being bad today.
I'm making a banana pudding cheesecake. Banana pudding well, cheesecake. I am making it a healthy, a healthy version tonight. Now, how how can that be healthy? Well, I'm using monk fruit instead of real sugar, and I'm using um, sugar-free banana cream pudding and a gluten-free crust. Oh, okay. Ooh, that smells good. And it minces it or just chops it? Just chops it. Now that saves a lot of time. Yeah. Where'd you get that, Laura? Where'd she get it? I think Amazon. <laughs> That's how Amazon has it. That is handy. Cilantro, onions, and jalapeno peppers chopped up. And then you saute them. And what I'll do with this is pour that into the shredded chicken and cheese once it cools. And I'm going to start this. So what's this called again? This is the Mexican Trinity. The only thing I did differently in it was add green chilies. And what do you put it on? I just saute them. But like, oh, you, you and have, like you can put it in queso. You could um, just put it on enchiladas. Um, Smells so good. I know. It's got cilantro mm -hmm. and jalapenos that have been seeded, so they're not as hot. All right, keep going. You got some more to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, what I did was I took ribeye and filet <laughs> and cut them into strips, and then we just saute it. Roll yeah. it up real tight. Right, when you do it, try to roll Mom it. Mom and Doug, they're still making fish tacos. So fish tacos that's still and a regular lot tacos. And regular tacos. So, so there's our different tacos gonna be made. We're having like every type of Mexican food you can think of. Trying to yeah. make you room. Those are chicken enchiladas. Oh, you're doing good, Cooper. Two birds, one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen enchiladas. It's a uh, so this is going to be a cabbage salad that my friend, uh, my Mexican friend Liliana taught me how to make. And so we're having fish tacos. And you take the fish and then you put this on there and you can put refried beans that I don't know if we have or not. And you just kind of, and it's a fish taco. So this is a homemade salad. It's really simple, but it's really, really good. It normally needs to sit overnight, but we're not going to have it sit overnight. And then uh, we're also doing a little trick with pineapple that we're going to show you here in just a second when he starts to cut that pineapple up. Okay, we are making a banana pudding cheesecake. <laughs> and we've got our banana cream pudding already mixed up. This is sugar-free with whole milk. We've got a block of 8-ounce cream cheese in here. We're going to add a third of a cup of monk fruit sweetener. All right. Can I dump it? Dump that in. All right, and we're gonna beat the cream cheese and the sugar together. Can I turn it on? Hang on. All right now, slowly. You can like the cheesecake part of it. Okay. All right, turn it back on. Just a little. Want me to turn it to two? You can turn it off. And then we're going to do heavy cream. One cup of heavy cream. Can I turn it back on low? And we're going to beat that until the peaks form. So it's going to be a minute on that. So now you can see it's thickened up. So this is like your cheesecake part, okay?
look in it. This, okay, now we're gonna mix in the banana cream pudding part with the cheesecake part. Just one, just slow, so it mixes it slowly. There you go, good job. So it's just gonna fold it in. Going to put the 100? No. my kid's favorite part. So I'm just gonna fold that in a little bit better, incorporate it. That smells so good. Banana pudding and cheesecake together. Yeah. So banana. We've got so many different things going on here. Smells like banana. Does it taste good? It smells like banana cupcakes. Banana cupcakes. So we're gonna do half of the mixture in the pie crust. That's a little bit too much, but we'll go with it. Put them all over. Eat the banana. Okay, I'm just gonna eat it. Go ahead, you can eat it. And then I'm just going to top it with whipped cream and more bananas and stick it in the refrigerator. And it needs to cool for at least three hours. And there it is. Huh? He's cutting up this pineapple and he's got this little secret that... We'll go get a cracker. One of the guys from the Hawaiian Islands. One of the guys from the Hawaiian Islands on what to do. So he's going to cut the pineapple and then he is going to... Roll it in salt. Roll it in salt. Let it sit for three minutes. Let, Let it sit for three minutes. Sit for three minutes, rinse in cold water. Let it sit for another three minutes and then slice it. Brings all the acidity out of the pineapple. And you get a good sweet taste. Mmm, I can't wait. Yeah. Cohen loves pineapple. So, one of our favorite meals growing up, I don't know, maybe not the rest of them, but I can remember as a kid sitting at the table. We always had to sit down and we always blessed our food. And we always had traditional food. Spaghetti, tacos, Mexican food. Help me out here, ham, sis. Potato salad. Ham, potato salad, spinach. chicken and dumplings. Yeah. yeah. And so Mexican food, I think, is, is it, would you say it's pretty close to your favorite food, Mom? I told him that anything that somebody else cooked was my favorite. So Mexican food, yes. But to also show how inexperienced I was in cooking, Bill came out from a trip and he said, let's make some Mexican food. He was chopping up tomatoes and lettuce and onions and all that. And I went, this is so complicated. I, I was overwhelmed. I knew so little about cooking beyond what I grew up with. So for me, in cooking here at Greg Gables, it gave me the opportunity to explore all those things that I'd not really had the money or the opportunity to do um, before. And I remember that Mexican food looked so complicated. Bill did it all, and I thought, whoa, this is really something. But it was good. We're putting Old Bay seasoning on our fish, and we're using uh, Mahi Mahi. And we're just gonna sprinkle it on and then put it in the oven. Okay. 425. 425? Mm -hmm. This is not gonna be too well. Let's do the shaker. <laughs> that up been all all over it. We don't know what the oven is on. Uh, the rest of the people in the kitchen use uh, timers and thermometers and temperatures. I do not. I just turn the oven on and cook it until it looks good. This is Cooper, Kelly's son, my, my great grandson. This is Clayton, my great grandson. He's five and Cooper is eight. I got it right. What grade are you in? Second. Second grade, and you are in pre-pre-K. Pre-K. That's great. So they're gonna they're gonna help make a dessert tonight. We're gonna dip the marshmallows into the chocolate. 
Okay, can here you go. Can we take the spoon out of it? Yes, yeah, we can. We'll take turns, okay? okay. It's so delicious. And, uh, yeah, and you kind of turn it. Oh my, you've watched your mom make chocolate and covered strawberries. Kind of, you think she should set it up or lay it down? You could just lay it down like that. Oh, that looks so good. I like the dark and then the white. Aww. Good job. Whoops. Oh, man. All right. You have them? Good. <laughs> Not quite yet. Good job. The steak fajita. Now, what, what kind of meat did you put in that you told me earlier? Ribeye and filet mignon. Ribeye. <laughs> I just happen to have that at home. So we're going to take the fish out, and we are going to put a little bit of uh, this butter on the top of it. Like I said, normally we use a uh, garlic butter, and I might actually sprinkle a little bit of garlic on it. I don't know. Anyway, this fish is almost done. And then we gotta cut it up so it can be kind of shredded on the, uh, for the tacos. We'll put it back in there for just a few minutes. Almost done, almost done. Okay, they are cooking all the dinner tonight, but it's become a custom when we get together. We have creamed eggs on toast. It's been happening forever when my family and, and my, my uh, my mother and dad, family, then my family, and now my kids' family. We have creamed eggs on coast in the morning. And this says you take your margarine and your flour <clears throat> and your uh, milk, make a roux, add all kinds of cheeses, cheddar cheese, American cheese, uh, Velveeta cheese, make it nice and cheesy, and then you slice uh, hard-boiled eggs on and put it in it and serve it over toast. It's called creamed eggs on toast. So that's my contribution to this weekend. And when do we usually eat it? Yes. Because this has become a family tradition and my Christmas kids. Christmas morning. Yeah, so Christmas morning, he, she would always be cooking this. And now it's tradition in my family that my we. My family. Yep, my family. All, they ask, can you just make me cream eggs on toast and let me take it home and eat it with my family? So and it has become a fan favorite. Is that, was that Mother Bee's recipe or you don't remember? I don't remember. And I don't know. But I will say, as a little philosophical message, that this was a tradition that's been shared through my family to my children and their children. And while we don't get together much for Christmas anymore because each of those families are doing their own thing, it's really great when we do get together. As I get more mature, uh, that we serve the cream eggs on toast. So that's a family tradition that I feel very grateful that they're continuing. Thank you. Don't have to cook it too long. We just want to melt the cheese so that, because um, the chicken's already pre-cooked and shredded. So. Yes, and then here's the fish. Should be done. I hope mine have yeah. overcooked it. We got sidetracked with peppers, hot peppers. Do you think we should shred this? Cut it up, Cut it up right now, or let it cool a little bit? Let it cool. Let it cool. That's gonna work really well. And then we just put this in a bowl. Yay. Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts that we can be together as a family, that we can rejoice in the love that you have given to us so that we can love one another. We ask forgiveness of our sins, of filling with your spirit, and a heart that wants to give service to others. We thank you for this food, the hands that prepared it. And I just praise you and bless you, Lord, for the gift of family that you've given to me 
on this birthday. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Now I will tell you a family tradition Listen. that the girls insta ins has started. We don't use plates. We use paper plates because no one wants to do dishes afterwards. So paper plates, I do insist on regular silverware. So thank you. Thank you for being here. May your family be blessed as I have been with mine. 40 seconds. I just put them in. Oh, well, I'll tell you why because I couldn't figure out how to set it. And, I got and then you forgot about it. And you're all, Sorry. By well, the time y'all get then yours, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about it. These are awfully big. Sorry. I think I need a children's size. I got the children's right here. here I'll see. These are the what? I like that. Yeah. Those are enchiladas. What do you guys say? Do we heat the tacos? This is borderline. Do we heat the tacos? Borderline feminism. <laughs> uh, why do I do with the chicken? Does it go on the tacos too? Go in the tacos? Okay, this is the boys. Hey, oh, I got mine. Okay, here. I want small ones. I want okay, to pick up. We got and then do I need, I guess we need one for plate. We need more small ones. We need more small ones. Okay. I will do more small ones. Uh, okay. Yes, I want a fish taco and angel roll. Let me get behind. Cooper rolled those up. Aw. Here. Uh, well, you want to pay for it. <laughs> You've never had a fish taco. It's, it's no different than cheese. Really good yeah, look, cheese, fish, <laughs> this stuff. You know, the only thing we don't really have is beans. All you need. Or should I beans? put it on that rather than this? No, no. You do whatever you want. Okay. And then, Why do you use your hands like that? Well, <laughs> yeah. Hi, Coco. Hi, So, <laughs> the Appalachian Channel brought several people up oh. to um, Arnbrook's store and they work where I work. And so um, they went and visit her, had a great time, you know. And so the next day or so, they came into where I worked and each one came up to me. See one in the hallway, they're like, I met your much younger sister. <laughs> I said, oh, you're so funny. Oh, that's funny. Then a couple minutes later, I see one out at the post area. They're like, oh, we met your much younger sister. Man, you are, how old are you? You're much older than her. Then another one. And I'm sitting there and just one after another, they're like, are you Taryn? I'm like, yes, I am the younger sister. She just is so old, she forgets how old she is. <laughs> so we have this wonderful, we have this wonderful banter. So then when I send people up to Arnbrook's store, they always go to her and say, hey, I met your much younger sister. So yes, there was like 10 of them that came up there because of your channel. And uh, I got to meet each one of them one by one to tell me how much older I was than... <laughs> you have to tell them, though. I've been in the store before, and they're like, hey, we're from Knoxville. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's so nice to meet you. And then they start. So they're like, so you have a younger sister who lives in Knoxville. And I said, that's right. And you go back and tell her I'm going to get her. <laughs> <laughs> this it was a fun, a fun little banter back and forth. It was yes. funny though when they come in because we got to talking and they were, and I said, "Well, my sister works where you're at," and I always ask people that, and then they're like, um, "Oh, we don't know her, or whatever." And these people are like, "I think we know her," and I was telling them where you were at, and, I, and they were asking me a question. I said, "I don't know that," and so they were like, "Does she wear glasses?" And I'm like, "I think so." But, I mean, she wouldn't be wearing them when she was working, I don't think. And they're like, does she wear her hair back? And I'm like, I assume she does. And so I pulled a picture up of you on Facebook. and Oh, the picture that you sent me of us two in the card. And they were like, I don't know if that's her for sure. And so then I pulled you up on Facebook. And they were like, oh, my gosh, that's her. We know your sister. And I said, well, now that you know my sister, what I would love for you to do. <laughs> Yes, it was fun. It was in the hall <laughs> that was day. And then she fun. calls the store the other day. You guys didn't know about this. So she calls the store, and I'm extremely busy in my hands. And Katie said, it's it's your sister, Taryn. I said, 
ask her, I mean, is, is it important? I said, because I got my hands in food. I mean, if I need to, I'll get off the grill. So she goes back and then she comes back and she doesn't have the phone. And she said, she said yes to call her back. And yes, it was kind of important since about 12, 10, 12 people have asked her if she's your, I'm um, your younger, or you're my younger sister, whatever. And I was cracking up. So it was an important call. Yeah. Anyway, yes. do we have fun that? It was fun that day. Well, I, I, I don't know, but anyway, it was fun for me. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> They're still paying me back. Yeah. So let me tell you about this one time. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we will. We can tell a story about me coming to visit you. Uh, the time that I got lost. <laughs> So, uh, I do have a directionally, uh, not anymore though, because we have G, but I am directionally handicapped. And, uh, this was before cell phones. Before cell phones. And she came to Roanoke to visit me because I had just moved from Florida back to Roanoke. And we were renting a house. And we took her up on mountains and we had a great time. She just needed to get back. So I said, make sure that when you go out, you follow the signs to Roanoke, because I lived out outside of Roanoke. And she drove, and she saw a sign that said Lexington. Well, she knew Lexington, Kentucky was near where Tennessee was, so she followed it. And she stopped in Lexington at a truck stop, and even asked, am I on the right path to Tennessee? And the man said, no, you're not. You need to go the opposite direction. Well, Tiffany, being Tiff, thought, I'm going to go keep going straight because I know I'm right. <laughs> she got to Maryland <laughs> and decided to turn around. Well, what happened was... <laughs> what, happened, what happened was... I was driving a Camaro and didn't have any money. And just enough to get back to Tennessee. But I kept looking and I thought, this doesn't feel familiar to me. <laughs> and I kept looking for the construction. And that one little sign with Bill, whatever that is, going up through there. And so I kept looking and I kept thinking, this doesn't feel very familiar. And anyway, I, don't, I probably blocked some of that story out. But I did end up at a truck stop. And I... And, um, it looks incredible. Needless to say, it did say welcome to Maryland. Needless to say, I ended back up at Teresa's house uh, two or three in the morning. Two or three, two in, the three morning. in the morning. Um, and they called me. They were thought that was quite entertaining. So, <laughs> and for Christmas we got her an atlas. Yes. <laughs> Well, I say that one should never let go of wanting to do what they've always wanted to do. I saved my dollar bills for almost two years and had enough money to skydive. I did all the, I got it all registered, paid for it, and did an eight-minute skydive at 66. I saved my money and did a hot air balloon at 68. I did a 10-line zip line in Costa Rica at 73. I did a glider plane ride at 76, and I did the last zip lines across a little river at 79. And um, I think it's important to know that no matter how you age, to hold on to your dreams. Since the 1990s, I'd wanted to go to Victoria, British Columbia, and I said, no, I'm giving that up. And then Taryn, Tiffany said, Mom, don't you want to go? And I thought, yeah, I do. So the girls were kind enough to go with me to um, Victoria, British Columbia. I got to go to South America for my grandson's re-wedding to his wife that was from uh, uh, Brit uh, Columbia, uh, South America. I've been to Las Vegas. Um, so I've had, a, I have had the opportunity to travel more than most, not as much as some, but I'm very grateful for it all. I never give up. It may take longer to get to where you want to go. But if it's worth doing, then take the time to do it. And um, I just encourage everybody, don't give up because you get more mature. Was this a Vegas show? Are you filming? Well, we'll cut it out, yeah. But we're not going to put nothing on here that's not appropriate. All I've got to say was it? As that when we went on the Costa Rica trip. Something happened that was funny. And so all 
I didn't start this. <laughs> That's she's all that trip, it was Mama and her men and all the guides. They'd say, "Give Mama a hug," you know, and or give you know, give Mama a kiss on the cheek. Well, I was in Las Vegas very innocently, and these two men that were dressed as cowboys, that were bare from the waist up. Were in the- You mean shirtless? We're on, we're on, we're, we're on Fremont Street, and these women before me, they were all doing the little act with them, and I thought, well, it'd be fun to get their picture made with them. So I walk up to them, and I say, can I have your picture made with you? And the next thing I know, I'm up in the air, I'm flipped around, people are gathering around, they're applauding. When I get off, I'm getting fist bumps. It was very innocent, <laughs> but it doesn't, <laughs> but it doesn't <laughs> look so nice in the I picture. I get your picture, and I went, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, Terry, <laughs> what, what are you doing? doing? We trust you with our mom. <laughs> I said, I didn't send the pictures. I was like, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But and then Terry I went to the Las Vegas welcome, the welcome sign, and we're getting our pictures made, and there's a mature Elvis there. And I don't know if it was Taryn or me, said, can I get my picture made with you? And all of a sudden, he's singing me, love me, tender, sing along with me, he's dancing with me. I don't know. I just know. I just have that magnetic personality, I guess. It was, it was fun, but it was awkward. You should see my pictures. My face was like, what am I going to do next? Now listen, this would be a good one for you to put. That would not oh, be inappropriate. Yeah, that that would, would be good. Be good. No. Oh, that one with Elvis is not mm-hmm. bad, Mom. You're singing along. You got your sunglasses on. People would be inspired by that. Can I sing? <laughs> well, not with the cowboy picture. Yeah. Well, now that it's out, now you got John curious. <laughs> it's all innocent, <laughs> but it was. Oh not. yeah, I'm sure it is. They were good-looking cowboys. Is all I got to say. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was them. terrible. I mean, I had on this long. Them. Coat, blind coat. I had on gloves. I had on my hood, and I'm up in the air. They're holding me up in the air, tossing me around, moving me around. I mean, there was no. I I didn't know what was going on, and it was obviously all innocent, but it was very scary. You had to be like Elvis. Is that what that was? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday!